Today's video is an extra long one, and there's a few reasons why. Obviously, you know we talk a lot about Switch 2 around here, and uh, what well, today's video includes is three updates, right? We have three big updates to the Nintendo Switch 2 situation, and I didn't want to do my typical video where I just kind of give the update and then talk a little bit of my opinions and move on with the day, because I feel like when I do that, there's a lot of context missing, and this context helps frame what the current conversations are right now surrounding Nintendo Switch 2 today day uh whatever day this is in november uh it's a friday i know that i think it's like the i don't know we, we got we're like two weeks away from thanksgiving or something like that so uh what i wanted to just note here as uh, we go through these updates is we have timestamps down below of course you can jump to each section the ones that interest you the most maybe you want to watch the entire video i think you will be a more informed person when talking about nintendo switch 2 if you do watch this entire video this isn't your typical leak rumor sort of thing this is just dealing with three very specific things regarding switch 2 that are fact-based things so uh i really am going to be quite excited about what you guys have to say about this video down below if you're interested in more videos like this uh, i don't do these deep dives very often but uh, i would definitely do more of a one if people really like this video and people really want to subscribe for more content like it so uh, we're on a road to 140,000 subscribers if you want more content like this go ahead and subscribe to the channel and first we're going to get to our first update and this begins with an update we have to a prior video so back on november 9th i talked about how nintendo provided some financial evidence in one of their fiscal report documents that nintendo had indeed begun some sort of mass assembly the number was 7,030 million million yen or otherwise known as 44 million dollars us in work in progress inventory the number itself comes from this document right here but since i and i am sure you don't know how to read japanese when we run it through google translate we get this showing that indeed it is work in progress number and is part of their inventory breakdown in that breakdown you see three parts one of which is the product and this is inventory they have in warehouses as finished products ready to be sold that's at 149,991 million yen or roughly 969 million dollars us of product ready to be sold we can simply be nice since it's close and just call that a billion dollars in product that's ready this is a combination of all things nintendo has ready to sell in their warehouse inventory as of the end of september it is a big number but it's not as big as some prior years during the switch generation and while this does seem like a lot you have to consider that a lot of this is stock for the holiday season for switch consoles it actually isn't even that high after all and an average of say 300 dollars uh, cutting between the switch Lite and the oled and selling just 3 million units this holiday season that would be 900 million in just switch stock alone of course that three million number is very conservative and their entire holiday stock wasn't simply sitting in a warehouse at the end of september also even the base price of 300 dollars for switch is not the same as the unit cost of the inventory that's msrp this is just mentioned as an example to show how while a billion dollar in products sitting in a warehouse sounds like a lot for a company like nintendo it's not actually that crazy of a number the other thing you see there is raw materials and supplies they have a massive expenditure here which isn't uncommon for nintendo either at 107,134 million yen that's roughly 692 million dollars us for easy rounding let's just say 700 million in raw materials now yes raw materials would include things like the base metals and such needed to make components but it also includes base products does nintendo have a million tegra x1s not attached to a board yet that's considered a raw material do they have millions of boards without anything attached to them that's raw materials this is not the same as work in progress now work in progress numbers seem minuscule in comparison but it's still astronomically high compared to the entire switch generation and even 2016 for switch manufacturing that was the point of the video we put out on november 9th and i concluded this meant that some form of mass assembly had begun i wasn't sure if it was final assembly as in turning switch 2 into a full retail unit ready to go or merely putting some of the components together 
As an example, you can have the entire tablet assembled, but that would still be a work in progress as that's not a complete ready to sell product yet. This was further explained in detail by the person who compiled the data on family boards in FWB BWD and shared on the Nintendo Switch 2 subreddit. Here, he explains the following. After part of a component from a supplier is in Nintendo's possession, it's counted towards the raw material inventory. It matters not if the material is in a warehouse, a cargo ship, or a factory floor ready to be used. It is raw material. When the material is transformed into part of a product and the product isn't completely finished, it is now counted towards the work in progress inventory. For example, after Nintendo receives the T239SOC system on a chip from NVIDIA, it is included in raw materials. As soon as they mount that chip to a PCB, like a motherboard, it becomes a work in progress. Knowing this, the 7 billion yen of work in progress inventory is probably the smoking gun of Switch 2 mass production as of September 2024 on, well, September 30th. Adding this additional context, it is clear that some form of assembly has begun for Nintendo Switch 2, and a lot of it. If you want to attribute it to the relatively low output of Alarmo or Switch's holiday, you would have to just look at the convenient chart he provided in a prior post to see that that would not be nearly enough to explain the massive leap. Only one thing explains it and that is the Nintendo Switch 2 was in full mass production as of September. Raw data is in fact the smoking gun. I know the Famiboard's user concludes that it is probably is the smoking gun, but unless Nintendo has another surprise product they are MSRP for $200 plus dollars that is going to sell millions of units relatively soon, the only logical conclusion is this is about, as Nintendo calls it, the Nintendo Switch successor. Also, because the number is so astronomically high compared to the Switch at any point, that also supports Furukawa's statements on combating scalping by simply having a lot more product available day one. And guys, this is all really important stuff. Uh, what this just means is that mass manufacturing and some sort of assembly has begun as of September. Uh, maybe final assembly is in October, but whatever the case is, heck, there could be final assembly in September as well. After all, they have almost a billion dollars in ready to sell product. Some of that could be switched to. So I just want to note here that this is just a lot of context people were missing from that last video on November 9th. So that's kind of our first update. But we're not done because we have an update on Nintendo Switch 2 today. A brand new update because Nintendo has literally today mentioned the Nintendo Switch successor yet again. Nintendo is participating in the 2025 Taipei International Games Exhibition, which is an event held in China that Nintendo participated in last year. Nintendo announced their participation today, and that's neat for Chinese Nintendo fans attending, just like it's neat for us in the United States when Nintendo attends events like PAX East and West. The event takes place between January 23rd and the 26th. So, what does this have to do with the Nintendo Switch 2? Well, they still state this at the end of the announcement. During the 2025 Taipei International E-Game Exhibition, there will be no announcement or display of the Nintendo Switch successor models on the scene. Please forgive me. Now that please forgive me bit might be a little overly dramatic. This was posted in Chinese and translated by Google after all, but this would seem to indicate that Nintendo Switch 2 would not be revealed prior to the event let alone shown off at it, suggesting a February or March reveal timing. It could be that this event has now narrowed down the window of reveal in a way that we wish Furukawa had already done. Andres Restart, however, friend of the channel, noted that we can't 100% be sure that this is actually going to have any impact. And this is because of the market it's in. The unfortunate truth is, due to regulations in China, things with Nintendo often get shown off and released much later than the rest of the world. Switch didn't come out there until just over two years after the platform launched elsewhere. And Andres Restart noted on X that new Pokemon Snap only just got approved to release in China this past summer in 2024. That game originally came out in April of 2021. So due to Chinese regulations, it is entirely possible that this event and words surrounding it have very little impact on Switch 2 
as it's highly likely not launching in China at the same time as the rest of the world. So I do feel like we need to note this, and if Nintendo doesn't announce it until February or March, we can obviously go back and look at this event and be like, well, I guess Nintendo warned us. So it could have an impact, but it also might not. That's why I wanted to provide the full context of this statement from Nintendo and what it may or may not mean. It could mean the reveal is in February or uh, in, in, you know, March, or it means nothing because, again, Nintendo's probably releasing the product much later in China. Anyways, that being said, we have another update, and this one, this one's tough to talk about. Uh, it's tough to talk about because it involves doing something we don't talk about at my channel. So I want to note that I do not care what candidate you supported. I do not care what you voted for. I don't care what country you're in and who you voted for. None of that matters to me. We're here to focus on the facts. I really ask that people down in our comment section don't come at each other and start the typical political arguments that are going on. Bottom line is there's a brand new regime coming in in the United States on January 20th, and there is something that regime is doing that could impact Nintendo Switch 2. And I want to thank content creators out there like Jeff Grubb and Nintendo Forecast for talking about this already, uh, but it is something that we need to address. Jeff Grubb put out a very interesting video earlier today to address tariffs and how it could impact Nintendo. It's a well thought out video in general, but it does have some conclusions I'm not sure I actually agree with. First, what is a tariff? Well, it's a tax applied by the government on imports or exports into and out of a given country. The United States has a new president-elect at the moment in former President Donald Trump, who is assuredly going to quickly apply tariffs to a lot of imported goods into the United States. His original proposal for this election was a 20% tariff for all foreign goods and a much higher 60% tariff for China. Now, what the final numbers actually are could be much different. And we do know last time he was president, he applied a 25% tariff to all Chinese goods back in 2019. There was panic then that it would lead to a price hike in the United States for the Switch and other consumer electronics. This never actually materialized because consumer electronics were given a blanket exemption from that tariff. The proposed issue is cropping up again, as tariffs could apply by the end of January, and another consumer electronic exemption isn't guaranteed. This has made Jeff Grubb, and even other YouTubers like Nintendo Forecast, wonder if such a tariff, one as high as 60%, could lead to Nintendo Switch 2 being delayed. Now, why did President Trump, at the time in 2019, give an exemption for consumer electronics? Well, as is typical in American politics, favors are often granted to backers of a regime. If a few consumer electronic companies backed the Trump campaign this time around, it is likely an exemption is granted. But let's assume that one isn't. Could this actually cause Nintendo Switch 2 to be delayed? Mm, no. Now, this is just an opinion, mind you, but Nintendo would have been aware of this possibility from the moment Trump was running for president again. In fact, Nintendo was aware of this years ago and has already diversified where it has the final products being manufactured. There are also several ways Nintendo could avoid that 60% China tax and instead get a much lower 20% tax rate by shipping from essentially any other country including Japan. There would be an accrued cost, of course. They would have to unload Chinese barge ships in, say, Taiwan, Vietnam, or even Japan, and then transfer those products to a local shipping barge and then have that shipped to the United States, thus making the import be from a country outside of China. But setting aside what Nintendo chooses to do in this respect, they aren't going to delay a product release over it. They are a company releasing a worldwide product. United States is not their only market, even if it is the largest one. And a global release plan won't be that affected by tariffs. What could be affected is MSRP launch price in the United States being slightly inflated, but not the overall status. Now, as an example, importing consumer electronics from Vietnam to the United States today already has a 15% tariff. While the 60% jump in China is extreme, it would be a significantly smaller jump in Vietnam from 15 to 20%. Nintendo does do mass assembly of their products in said country. All Nintendo would have to do is basically shift what assemblers send their products to which countries. All assemblers outside of China would likely just send their assembled units to the United States. 
Meanwhile, China assemblers would merely supply the rest of the world. This is, of course, in the case an exemption isn't granted. Nintendo already set themselves up for this years ago by partnering with many assembly partners in countries outside of China. As in, Furukawa's already enacted plans to get around this potential U.S. tariff issue a long time ago. By diversifying where products are assembled, Nintendo is already set up in case the tariffs do go into effect immediately in 2025. So, long story short here, concerns over the tariffs are understandable, but misplaced with Nintendo, who already prepped for such a situation before it even occurred. There is likely no impact on reveal, price, or even release date. Now, again, just my opinions, of course, but I seriously doubt any of this has any impact. Nintendo committed back in May to reveal it this fiscal year. I don't think those plans have changed. I think when they said it back in May, they already knew exactly when they were going to reveal it, whether that's still in the last two months of this year or the first three months of next year. Either way, Nintendo already knew. They already knew when they're releasing it. They have mass manufacturing going on in September. They're not just going to lose millions and millions and millions, maybe billions of dollars, leaving products sitting on a shelf. I'm just telling you, this thing's releasing first half of next year. I'm very confident in that. Again, that is also just an opinion. But that is based on all available data from mass manufacturing to what Nintendo's already done to combat tariffs before they even occur, um, combined with obviously all the other ongoing conversations here regarding the Nintendo Switch 2. So that's what we got for you today. Three big updates. You guys let me know what you think about all this stuff down in the comments below. I am Nathaniel Rumpeljance from Nintendo Prime. And as always, I'll catch you in the next video.